Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this short video I'm going to address a question I was asked recently from somebody who said um, I want to make some money from my archive of landscape photography. Fair enough, um, if you've got lots of pictures and they're decent pictures why shouldn't you be able to make some money out of them? The problem was that the question was purely technical, it was purely about printers and inks and paper. Now, started off, the person said they were thinking of giclée prints. Now, there was an assumption that giclée meant quality. Well, it, it's marketing hokum at best, and it, it doesn't really mean anything. Now, I've covered this in other videos before, and it's really something that you use to tell people when you want to sell pictures a bit more expensively. But at least it suggested that they were thinking of quality which, if nothing else, immediately to me suggests that you're going to be using pigment ink based system, maybe, maybe archival papers, uh, good quality paper, anyway, it emphasises the quality size. It's why people use it for marketing, uh, it doesn't mean much else. Um, as I say, I've, I've covered this elsewhere. But also, they were thinking of making greetings cards. Um, to uh, go with their prints. Now, nothing wrong with that, and it's a great way of diversifying your market, as well as producing big prints, because not everyone has the wall space for big prints. So, you know, look at small cards. People might buy cards. I've covered this aspect of marketing many times. I've got quite a lot of videos that look at the business side of photography and uh, you know, what to get out of it. Then came the crunch question, which suggested they were not perhaps thinking this through in terms of a business. What about an Epson XP15000 as a printer? Well, it's a great printer. I've used it. I've, I've reviewed it. It's a home office type printer. It's very much a consumer printer. It has relatively small ink cartridges. Uh, it's not a pigment ink printer. So this is not a printer that you would associate with things like clay printing. Although, as I've said, that could mean whatever it is you want it to mean. It doesn't mean anything in particular. But, so they're looking at a cheap printer. Then came the caveats with it that really tell me that they're perhaps not addressing this fully. Not that they're not looking at it the right way, but they just haven't thought things through. Epson inks are too expensive. Can I use compatible inks? Well, if the dye-based Epson XP15000 is not something I'd think of for high-end prints, then using compatible inks in it, and compatible is always an open question that's left unanswered, uh, is a step in the opposite direction. No, um, I would never choose third-party inks. If I was looking to save money, wasn't worried about print quality and all kinds of things like that, then maybe I might for an office printer, but not for printing photos. It's just not up to it. Then there was the bit about the hidden message of that. I think the ink costs are too much. What does that tell me? It tells me how much are they looking to sell these prints for. Now, if ink costs make a significant contribution towards your bottom line, then that immediately tells me that likely you're not charging enough. Ink costs in many ways, if you're looking to actually make money rather than just earn a few bob, just occasional sales, if you're actually looking to make some money, then ink costs should be almost a negligible effect on your bottom line. If they are, it means you're in a, in a cost conscious market. If you're in a cost conscious market, you need to understand your market, what it wants, what it will pay for, how much it will pay, even more than if you were in a higher end print area. Now, what didn't they ask? Now, I've, I've covered this in lots of sort of videos looking at aspects of business, but essentially there was no mention of who they're going to sell to. There was no mention of what these people buy. There's no mention of where they buy their prints. So there was none of the external marketing side of it. It was just, how can I make money from my prints? I'm looking for a cheap printer. 
Well, if you're looking for a cheap printer to make money from your prints, then you're going to be making cheap prints. And if you're making cheap prints, you're not going to be making much money. Uh, particularly when you add it in, let's just say you do start selling quite a few prints, when you start adding in the fulfillment side of it, when you're going to have, you know, you've got to look after packaging, postage, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. It is so much more. In many ways, ask the right questions at the start. And those questions are not which printer, which paper, which ink should I get? Those, the answers to those will somehow, you know, usually drop out along the way when you look at the business side of things. But it's still, I get so many questions for people saying, I have pictures. People have told me these are nice pictures. I ought to sell them. I can make some money. Sounds very simple like that. Unfortunately, it's not. Um, picture here uh, from my own landscape archive um, of some aspens in Colorado. It's another shot, black and white shot, also taken in Colorado. Um, I happen to like both these pictures. I am under no illusions that I'm going to ever make any money from these pictures. Um, it might be somebody in Colorado sees one of them and thinks, oh, I know that place and I'd like a print of it. Well, that's a bonus if they do. But I'm not going to sell prints of Colorado here in Leicester in the UK. Um, I'm unlikely to sell many UK prints here in Leicester, in the, in the centre of the UK. Um, look at your market, look at what it is you want. And um, I, you know, I've, I've obviously changed a few things in it, but um, I, I dealt with this one by email. And my real answer is, you're not asking the right questions. Um, if you don't know, how you're going to sell stuff, who you're going to sell stuff to, how are you ever going to manage it? You might strike lucky, um, somebody's going to one day, but I don't think this is the approach. So um, there you have it. Uh, yeah, you may have lots of pictures, they may be great pictures, but don't just assume people are going to want them on the walls. Oh, well. I hope these videos are of some use. Uh, uh, regular viewers will notice I'm not in the corner of our kitchen anymore. I've had a massive clear out in the office, which means I now have uh, much more area here to be able to show things and demonstrate stuff. And uh, I've got quite a few ideas for expanding what the sorts of videos I do. So I uh, hope this has been of interest. Uh, please do subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.